Okay, uh, so for structure and organic chemistry, uh, so we'll start out with some basic introduction, introductory material, and then we'll basically spend a lot of time in this chapter reviewing some concepts from General Chemistry 1 that you have to really understand in order to understand organic chemistry. Uh, so first of all, what is organic chemistry? Um, so it's basically the chemistry of carbon. Uh, based compounds uh, so we're talking about so there's carbon in the periodic table so if, if the compound contains carbon in it uh, then technically it's an organic molecule and that constitutes a lot of molecules millions of molecules have carbon in them um, and so what is inorganic chemistry inorganic chemistry is everything else the chemistry of all of the other elements. Uh, so, you know, just the fact that an entire discipline in chemistry is based on carbon-based compounds signifies just how significant it is. Uh, organic chemistry is also called the chemistry of life. <clears throat> Why is it the chem called the chemistry of life? Uh, so, you know, what are the main biomolecules in biological chemistry? Be proteins, sugars, nucleic acids, lipids, for example, all of these. All of them have carbon in them. So all of the molecules are based on carbon network, carbon framework. Okay, so the main elements that we'll see in organic chemistry, <clears throat> it, besides carbon and organic molecules, uh, so you often see carbon attached to nitrogen, um, oxygen, hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So if you remember fluorine, chlorine bromine iodine or the halogens so carbons often find bonded to halogens uh, oftentimes phosphorus sometimes sulfur occasionally you see it bonded to some metals so in this class and organic two we'll look at examples of carbon attached to lithium copper magnesium palladium for example uh, but for the most part most of the time we'll look at carbon attached to to these elements <clears throat> Okay, so uh, basic place to start in organic chemistry is just to review bonding. And if you want to understand bonding, you, then you have to know what valence electrons are, uh, know what the octet rule is, ionic, we'll review ionic bonds, covalent bonds. And with regards to covalent bonds, in order to understand that concept, you have to understand what electronegativity is. And once you understand that, then we can discuss what are called nonpolar covalent bonds and polar covalent bonds. <clears throat> okay, so if you remember what valence electrons are, so that's the electrons that are involved in bonding. Um, so these are the electrons that are going to be used to make ionic or covalent bonds. And so how many valence electrons does these, do these elements have? Hydrogen has one, carbon has four, nitrogen five, oxygen six, fluorine seven. So if you remember this from general chemistry, how do you know this? Uh, well, the easiest way is just look at the periodic table, right? This is group one, so hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, they all have one valence electron. Uh, if you go to group two, these elements have two valence electrons. Group three, three valence electrons. Carbon's in group four, so it has four valence electrons. Nitrogen's in group five. So nitrogen and phosphorus have five valence electrons. Oxygen and sulfur have six valence electrons. <clears throat> and your halogens have seven valence electrons. Or the other way to figure that out, if you don't, if you remember, uh, so if you remember electron configuration, hydrogen is 1s1. And so that one is its one valence electron. Carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, six electrons, right? Carbon's atomic number six, it's got six electrons. And if you remember from general chemistry, this is a noble gas, that's helium, so that's called the core <clears throat> electrons, and they're not involved in bonding.
So the core electrons for all practical purposes can be ignored because they don't do anything uh, besides occupy space in the element and affect its uh, react reactivity to an extent, but the electrons that participate in bonding are the valence electrons, so those beyond the noble gas. And so that would be two electrons from the 2s and two from the 2p, so four electrons total. <clears throat> or for nitrogens, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. And so again, that would be the core. So we ignore those. And then those electrons beyond the core. So two and three would be its five valence electrons and, and so forth. <clears throat> Okay, so let's see if you remember what ionic bonds are. <clears throat> well, so first of all, what is electronegativity? Where is that at? If I have... uh, I guess that was on my next one, my next lecture. <clears throat> so if you have two elements in a bond, if their electronegativity difference is greater, than 2.0, <clears throat> then they would typically form ionic bonds. And we'll say a little bit about more about electronegativity in the next lecture. <clears throat> okay, so if you remember what ionic bonds are, so first of all, how many valence electrons does sodium have? It's there in the periodic table, so it's got one valence electron. And fluorine is here, so it's got seven valence electrons. So we could write a Lewis dot structure for sodium like that with one dot and fluorine like that with seven dots and what happens when you mix the two together and allow them to react well sodium gives up its electron to fluorine and so now you would have Na plus <clears throat> and now fluorine has an extra electron so it's negatively charged so you have Na plus and F minus <clears throat> uh, so the two do not share electrons and that's the nature of an ionic bond but they are attracted to each other all right because positives are attracted to negative so sodium is positive fluoride is negative so there is a mutual attraction between them but there's no sharing of electrons between them so if we did the same thing with magnesium and chlorine, well magnesium is in group two, so it's got two valence electrons, and fluorine, chlorine's in group seven, so it's got seven valence electrons. Um, and so if you remember the uh, octet rule, so atoms like to have 80 electrons. Uh, so, you know, carbon's got four electrons in its outer shell. If it has four more, then it would complete the outer shell and it would have 80 electrons now, so it would satisfy the octet rule. Right, where would those four electrons go? They would go into the 2p orbital to make 2p6. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Now you have 80 electrons in the outer shell, so that's the octet rule. So if carbon could gain four more electrons, for example, it would be more stable. It would have 10 electrons like neon. Uh, so in fluorine in this case, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So fluorine's atomic number nine, it's got nine electrons total. Right, that's the core electrons, which we are ignoring, and this is the seven valence electrons. Well, how many more electrons does fluorine like to have? It likes to have one more electron to become 2s2, 2p6. And then that would have the, then that would have the electron configuration of neon. Right, it would be F minus, so F minus and neon, if you remember, are iso electronic. Right, they have the same numbers of electrons. So basically, atoms like to gain or lose enough electrons so that they have the same number of electrons as a noble gas. Um, so magnesium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. So it wants to get rid of those two electrons, and chlorine, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. It only wants one electron 
to have 18 electrons to look like argon and magnesium wants to lose two electrons and then it has 10 which would look like neon so since magnesium wants to lose two and chlorine only wants to gain one then what you need are two chlorine atoms so magnesium can lose one electron to this chlorine and one electron to that chlorine and then you would have mg plus two plus since it lost two electrons and you would have two Cl minus and nothing is attached to each other so let's just draw them far, far away from each other so it's obvious that we're not attaching anything to each other right or you would have MgCl2 and so you just have to recognize that MgCl2 is really an ionic compound it's really an Mg2 plus cation and two Cl minus anions so if we did the same thing with lithium it's got one valence electron so it wants to get rid of one electron carbons oxygens one is two two is two two p4 it wants two electrons but lithium only wants to get rid of one so then you need so if we drew the Lewis dot structure oxygen has six valence electrons lithium has one it only wants to get rid of one, but oxygen wants two, so we have to have two lithium atoms for every one oxygen, and then lithium will give away an electron, that will give away an electron, and you would have two Li plus, and an O, since oxygen gained two electrons, and O2 minus, should make Li O2. Again, another ionic compound. But in organic chemistry, that's really not what's important. What's most important is covalent compounds because carbon likes to form covalent bonds. And this entire course is based on carbon. And if carbon likes to be, make covalent bonds, then that's obviously gonna be the one that's more important. Although it can make ionic bonds as well. So if we took a molecule like CH4, uh, so carbon, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. It's got four valence electrons, so four dots. So for it's four valence electrons. And hydrogen is 1s1, so it's got one valence electron. And so we wanted to draw a structure for CH4. So carbon with its four dots and hydrogen with its two, we're going to let them share those electrons share those and share those and share those and so carbon will make four covalent bonds so what is covalent bonds it means the sharing of electrons So for CH4, then you would have, you would write the molecule like that, right? And each line each line represents two shared electrons. Okay, so if we did the same thing for these molecules, So for CH, uh, CH2, Cl2. So if you remember how to write Lewis dot structures, so carbon's got four valence electrons, hydrogen's got one, and there's two hydrogens, and chlorine's got seven, there's two chlorine, so that's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 electrons in the molecule. So if you draw a Lewis dot structure, it better have 20 electrons in it, otherwise it's wrong. And one of the easiest approaches to take, since you, since you only have one carbon, uh, is to put it in the middle and attach everything to it. So if we put carbon in the middle and attach two hydrogens and attach two chlorines, with two, with, so four single bonds, so that would, that would consume 80 electrons, so there's 12 electrons to go. Um, so carbon wants to have 
80 electrons. Chlorine wants to have 80 electrons. Hydrogen, however, wants to just gain one electron to become 1s2, which would have the same electron configuration as helium. <clears throat> so hydrogen only wants one extra electron. So it only wants two total. So hydrogens are happy because each hydrogen has one bond, so two electrons around it. <clears throat> the carbon's got four bonds around it, so that would be 80 electrons. So carbon's got an octet now. And then to make chlorine happy, since you don't have any other atoms to attach, then you can add lone pairs to it. <clears throat> so that would be non bonded electrons or lone pair, or lone pair electrons. You know, so what are they doing in the molecules? Basically nothing, they're just there. Um, <clears throat> so now how many electrons do we have? We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 from lone pairs and 8 from bonds. So that's 20 electrons. So that's how many we're supposed to have. Each chlor chlorine now has 8 electrons, so each chlorine's got an octet, so the chlorines are happy as well. So that's what the structure of CH2CO2 looks like. Okay, uh, a couple more examples, a few more examples. <clears throat> okay, so C2H4, so carbon. So two carbons, so we have 80 electrons there. And 80 electrons from hydrogen, so we have uh, 12 electrons to build this molecule. <clears throat> Okay, so if we attach the two carbons to each other, and then attach four hydrogens, and so that would be one, two, three, four, five bonds. So that's 10 electrons, but we're supposed to have 12. So, and each carbon's not happy yet. Um, so if we made each carbon happy by putting two lone pairs, that's that's too many electrons. So in this case, you have two too many electrons. All right. So if you drew a Lewis structure with single bonds, and then give, and when, once all of your atoms are used, then if you add lone pairs to everything, to give everything an octet, 80 electrons and then count your electrons. If you have two too many electrons, uh, then what that means is you, you need to have a double bond instead. All right, so if you erase two lone pairs, that would be erasing four electrons, so then you would be down to 10, and then if you added another bond instead, then you would be at 12 electrons, which is what you're supposed to have. Okay, so let's see. So if we get rid of these four electrons and add another bond instead, then now we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons. And carbon's got four bonds, so it's happy, and hydrogen's got two bonds, so it's happy. So that would be the structure of the molecule. Okay, let's just take. Uh, one more example, C2H2. So now you only have two, 10 electrons to build the molecule. So again, if we just attached everything with single bonds and then added lone pairs to give the carbons 80 electrons, then now you have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 electrons which is four too many. So if we had two too many, we needed a double bond. If we have four too many, then we need two double bonds or one triple bond. So 
So four too many electrons means you need two double bonds or one triple bond. Well, in this case, we can't make two double bonds, so our only option is one triple bond. So then we can we can take away four electrons, add another bond, take away four electrons, add another bond. And then you would have the right Lewis structure for the molecule. So now you have two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten electrons in bonds. Hodgson's got two bond, two electrons around it and carbon's got eight electrons around it since each line counts for two electrons. Okay, so hopefully you remember how to write Lewis structures from general chemistry. Uh, if you don't, you can always go check out my general chemistry one lectures and uh, it should be some lectures, video lectures on how to write Lewis dot structures. Um, so lastly here, one thing you want to keep in mind then uh, so how many bonds do elements like to make? Since carbon's got four valence, it wants four more. Then carbon likes to make four bonds. So it can make four single bonds. Or it can make um, two single bonds and one double bond. Oops. Or it can make a... Man. One single bond and a triple bond. That would be four bonds. Carbon can, you can have quadruple bonds, not very common. We won't see any in this class. Or the other alternative would be to have two double bonds. So in any organic molecule you draw, that's carbon's pretty much going to look like one of those. And most likely one of these four. So hydrogen has one electron and only wants one more, so it wants to make one bond. So if you ever put two bonds to hydrogen in this class, it will be wrong. 100% of the time. Right, hydrogen only wants one bond. Uh, oxygen has six valence electrons, so it wants two more. So oxygen likes to make two bonds. So in this class, then, you'll typically see oxygen with two single bonds. And then typically it has two lone pairs. Or you'll see oxygen with a double bond and then two lone pairs. Right, nitrogen has five valence electron, wants three more electrons so so nitrogen typically makes three bonds so you'll typically see nitrogen in this class as three single bonds and a lone pair or a single bond and a double bond in a lone pair or a triple bond and a lone pair and then your halogens have seven valence electrons so they only want one more so in this so then you'll typically see your halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine with one bond to them. So if you ever draw a structure in this class where you have a chlorine with two bonds to it, it's probably going to be wrong 100% of the time. So just keep in mind, halogens like one bond, hydrogen likes one bond, oxygen likes two bonds, nitrogen likes three bonds. Okay.